Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of learning to live life on your own terms. The truth is, at some point of our lives, we become extremely susceptible to the opinions of others oftentimes to the point where we let it affect our actions and life decisions. But the raw reality is no one else is paying your bills, living your life, or truly knows your innermost dreams and passions. If that's the case, why should we let other people dictate how we decide to live our lives or how we feel about ourselves? The older we get, the more we realize that the opinions of others are just that, their opinions. You can respect the opinions of others, but in the end, you have to do what's truly best for you. The more we free ourselves from internalizing what other people think and instead start listening to our own inner voice, the faster we align and manifest an authentic life filled with true joy and limitless possibilities, done on our own terms. There's nothing more gratifying at looking at all you've accomplished, knowing that you earned it by doing things your own way. As Steve Jobs quotes, your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Stay tuned, coming up after the break, and congratulations on winning your first Daytime Emmy for Outstanding Younger Performer in a Drama Series. Walk us through that experience. What did it mean to you winning this award, especially because you're such an accomplished actress? I know you've been acting since you were seven years old. I'm so grateful. That's the only thing that pops to mind. You know, I uh, don't act for the accolades. I do it because it's a passion of mine and I can't imagine my life not doing that. Um, so I never held any weight on winning awards or, or getting recognized for my talent in an outside perspective. Um, so I, I, I was hoping that I would win once I found out that I was nominated, but it never, it, it never held too much weight on my self-worth. But winning it was really, really cool. I will <laughs> attest to that. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have American actress Victoria Coneball, best known as Sierra Brady in the NBC soap opera Days of Our Lives. Victoria, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? Oh, it is a pleasure. Thank you for having me. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. The weather in Toronto is so nice. Usually it's really cold during this time, but it's so nice. It's such a lovely day and I'm so excited to speak to you today. So thank you for making the time to be on the show. <laughs> Before we get into, you know, your breakout role in Days of Our Lives, I want to talk to you a little bit about your childhood and upbringing. Uh, when did you develop a love for acting? Uh, what a great question. I love answering this. Uh, I started acting when I was seven years old, roughly. Wow. So wow. I was in attendance of this off-Broadway production of The Hobbit, and I just remember, like, being so enamored by what was happening. I, I've never seen theater before. You know, I've seen movies and TV, but theater was something really special. And um, I told my mother that I wanted to try it out. And she talked to the director after the show and asked if I could audition, and I did. And he hired me, and then I was with that off-Broadway production company for seven years until I was 14 and started high school. Um, and then I went to a performing arts high school that specializes in, in um, acting and singing and dancing and whatnot. So it's been heavy in my life. I, I love acting very much and, and I always have. And I know that you went to the Fiorello H. LaGuardia High School of Music and Art and Performing Arts in Upper New York. So what did that experience teach you and do you feel that it shaped you into the actress you are today? Absolutely. Um, the school is, you know, focused on on performing arts. So we would block out half of our day to uh, our creative classes, and then the other half of the day to our academic classes. Um, and it's it's really special. Uh, there are a lot of conservatory high schools in New York, but there's something different about LaGuardia. You know, um, our our list of successful alumni is massive. We have so many talented, lovely performers that, that were bred in that school. And I think that it really did shape me just because it helped me 
develop my love for it at a young age and it helped me understand that it is exactly what I wanted to do to do when I grew up. So uh, it, it had a lot of influence. I was also um, signed to my first agency as a result of that school. We had, oh. yeah, we had this showcase at the end of senior year where we were, you know, watched by like 50 agencies. It was a big deal. They all knew, you know, what it was, the Senior LaGuardia Drama Showcase. And I got signed and they were the ones who actually um, pushed me to go to L.A. Uh, and that's where, you know, the ball started rolling and, and everything started coming together for me. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Let, let's fast forward to your audition for Days of Our Lives. Like what was running through your head? Because I'm sure it was really nerve wracking. Well, interestingly enough, no, I had been auditioning for a while uh, before I booked the show. So it wasn't super nerve wracking um, just because after a while of auditioning you kind of perfect the art of not caring yeah. and not yourself get nervous because you can't you run yourself crazy if you cared so much about every audition um, but I had auditioned for a lot of big things um, that would have you know made me nervous but I, I didn't allow myself to just because it would sabotage me and my performance um, but the first time I auditioned, I remember not feeling very good about it at all. I didn't have a good night's sleep the night before. I uh, I was given the wrong set of audition scenes to memorize. So I get there and all the girls are memorizing something else. And I'm like, wait a minute, I have the wrong scene. Oh my God. So I had to quickly, you know, pull this audition out of thin air. And I remember thinking, yep, I bombed that. That's okay. On to the next. And I didn't hear from them for two months. So I, I thought that it was just an opportunity that I missed. But they reach out to my team two months after the initial audition saying that they want to see me again. And then they put me through the ringer. They had me audition like four or five times before I actually booked the show. Wow. I, I think that's really important what you said is like once you start auditioning a lot, you know, you kind of stop being so self-conscious. I know for my first audition, uh, I was so nervous and I was so in my head. And as mm. I did more auditions, I just kind of, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to be myself. And yeah. if it happens, it happens. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> and it's sometimes the ones that you think you got that you didn't. And, right. And you know, the ones that you come that you actually do get. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just throw it to the universe. It's exhausting to be that nervous all the time and self-conscious. It is exhausting. So at some point you're just like, eh, whatever. Yeah. The universe will do what it will. Yeah, I love that. It's so true. You just have to do your best every time and see what happens, right? <laughs> yeah. Let, let's talk about your character, Sierra Brady, on Days of Our Lives. For our viewers that don't know about her, let, let's talk about who she is and some of the challenges that she faces. Absolutely. She is the daughter of two of Days of Our Lives um, most historical characters, honestly. Um, both of them are detectives, so she is a detective in her blood. She was raised to always be suspicious. Uh, she was raised to be a very strong-willed woman. Um, there's never a situation that goes by where Sierra will keep her mouth closed uh, if something isn't right. She always fights for the underdog, um, and she's she's confident and and spunky. She's a very spicy young girl. Uh, she uh, rides a motorcycle, uh, always wears leather jackets. She's she's really cool. I like her a lot. Yeah. Do you see any similarities in your own personality? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very much so, and I think that's why, um, you know, the writers realized what spice I bring to Sierra because I just am that innately. Um, so they started writing, you know, spicier dialogue and, and crazier storylines for me because um, of how Sierra and I complemented each other. Um, but yeah, I, I wear leather jackets just like she does. I will not keep my mouth shut in an argument if I know that some, if I'm fighting for the right thing. Um, and I'm very passionate about what is the right decision and, and the, the morally good decision. So I'm, I'm very similar to her in that way. Mm -hmm. I love that. I can completely relate to that. <laughs> and it's right. all about being passionate, right? You know, that's what gives life zest is being passionate and, and yourself. So I, I love that. I want to talk about your more, most recent project, uh, Beyond Salem. What can fans expect? 
Um, it is a whirlwind. It is similar to Days of Our Lives in that we are we have the same characters. Um, it's a spinoff on NBC, but you get to see sides of the characters that you wouldn't on the on the regular show uh, just because it's considered prime time because it's on a prime time streaming platform. So we get to have a bit more fun with the dialogue, with the storyline. Um, you know, fans can expect a lot of action and a lot of surprises. And congratulations on winning your first Daytime Emmy for Outstanding Younger Performer in a Drama Series. Walk us through that experience. What did it mean to you winning this award, especially because you're such an accomplished actress? I know you've been acting since you were seven years old. I'm so grateful. That's the only thing that pops to mind. You know, I uh, don't act for the accolades. I do it because it's a passion of mine and I can't imagine my life not doing that. Mm -hmm. um, so I never held any weight on winning awards or, or getting recognized for my talent in an outside perspective. Um, so I, I, I was hoping that I would win once I found out that I was nominated, but it never, it, it never held too much weight on my self-worth. But winning it was really, really cool. I will <laughs> attest to that. It, um, it spoke a lot to my younger self, like you touched on a moment ago. I reflected on like the seven, 10, 13 year old version of myself. And I was like, I kept imagining if I walked up to her and said, hey girl, one day you're gonna be an Emmy winner. She wouldn't believe me. So it's kind of crazy to look at it that way. It's really humbling when I, when I you know, step back and look at where I came from um, and appreciate it from that perspective. But yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty cool to win. <laughs> oh, I, I, I got goosebumps when you said that. I totally felt that because, you know, that your younger self, you know, it, it's true because, you know, when you work so hard and you get these these milestones, it, it's it's humbling um, and it's kind of surreal, right? So I completely see where you're coming from. And I, I, congratulations. That's a big deal. <laughs> Thank you so much. As a young actress, you know, what's been your favorite part of being in the industry and what's been the most difficult? Uh, my favorite part is the creative expression. Uh, the fact that my job is literally me telling a story. Uh, I think that's the coolest job ever. I love that, that I can use my vessel to portray another character that might relate to the audience. Um, that is really gratifying when fans and people who watch the show reach out to me with words like, hey, your performance helped me get through something, or oh, I can relate to what Sierra is going through. Thank you for doing it so well, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. That is the most gratifying part of having fans and, and being known in the industry. You know, uh, people watching your work and having it move them. Um, and then the rest, the industry is hard in that there's a lot of rejection, a lot of eyes on you all the time, a lot of people pressuring you to look a certain way and, and you know, dress a certain way. And, and at some points it may feel like you, it's easy to lose parts of yourself to fit into the mold. But I don't like doing that. I usually break through the mold as much as possible just because our individual our individuality is our secret weapon mm -hmm. uh, and the industry likes to kind of take it away from us in, in the public aspect and that they like to, you know, group us into a certain type. And it's like, no, nope, I'm going to be me and you can't stop. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I feel like in this industry, it's so important to be yourself. Um, most of the most successful people are authentically themselves and the ones that aren't, you know, they fall off. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's great advice and I can definitely tell you're very authentic in who you are. Um, so that's, I think that's definitely played a part in your success. And I want to ask you, what do you feel is your most admirable trait and how do you feel it's played a part in your success? Wow. <laughs> mm. My, okay, I think my most admirable trait is my willingness to see the good in every situation. Like I seldom get upset or frustrated. I seldom find things to complain about just because I think it's a, personally, it's a waste of time. It doesn't do me any good. Um, so when things don't go my way on set, when I'm, you know, running late or, 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 
I get rejected or I really want this role and I didn't get it. I'm really good at letting go of things that normally would bother the, you know, a regular person. And it does bother me and I acknowledge it and I let it go. But I think that is really important to just like go with the flow and, and take it easy and not take life too seriously because we only put stress on ourselves when we do that. So, um, yeah, I'm good at I'm good at looking at the positive, which is really important in an industry that is constantly throwing negative things your way. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And I like that you said letting go because sometimes people hold on, they keep getting rejected and that kind of thing. They hold on to that and uh, it transfers to other parts of their life. So I think it is important to just let go, do your best, um, and see the good and even the bad, right? Even the yeah. challenges that we face um, lead us to better things sometimes. So I, I like that perspective. <laughs> I definitely see how that's played a role in your success. And, you know, I created this platform to inspire people and motivate them by showing success stories like yours. And you've been really successful in this industry. I mean, you're winning daytime Emmys and <laughs> you have such a big role <laughs> on Days of Our Lives. So what do you think or, or, you know what, what piece of advice would you share for our audience? Maybe someone that's going through a difficult time is seeing that rejection in that industry because, you know, a lot of people do so many auditions and they get those no's and, you know, they take it to heart. So, you know, what yeah. advice would you give for someone who maybe is giving up on their dream, not seeing that success um, and um, maybe on the verge of giving up? What would you say to them? <sighs> Don't give up if it's what you really want. Like reflect, make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Um, but n always have faith in yourself. Cause if you're not going to have faith in yourself, who's gonna, you know, yeah. if you don't see yourself as a star, how are you going to walk in a room and expect other people to think you're a star? You have to have faith and confidence in what you do. Um, and keep fighting. You never know when that door is going to open. You could be, you know, trying all the doors, they're locked, they're locked. The one that you're about to put your hand on, maybe the one that opens. And if you give up right before it does, how mad are you going to be at yourself? Keep going, keep going, make sure you're in it for the right reasons. Um, and persevere. This is, this is, you know, good things don't come easy and this is a really good thing. So it's going to be really hard. The competition is stiff. Um, and also don't ever let yourself get too cocky, you know, keep, mm going to the acting classes, keep studying, keep reading the books, read the plays, watch great movies, um, and really work on yourself. Practice on your craft because we're never done learning. Even the best actors in the world learn daily. So it's like, keep it up, work hard, focus, and uh, keep your eye on the prize. I think that's amazing advice and especially believing in yourself, right? If, if you don't believe in yourself, no one will. And when you're confident, yeah. You know, everyone believes in you because you're confident in yourself. So I love that advice. Thank you so much for being yeah. on the show today. I want to ask, what's next for you? Where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> oh, my God. Hopefully doing movies, big action movies, sports movies, something like Euphoria. I don't know. I want to get like a film that's nitty and gritty, a film that I can really sink my teeth into and, and fall in love with. Um, but yeah, in five years, I'm going to still be doing this acting thing. I know it. I love it so much and I'm not going to stop. So five years from now, we'll have another interview and I'll have a repertoire of, of films to discuss. <laughs> yeah, the sky's the limit and I know you're going to go so far. I can even see you doing a horror movie because you're such a passionate, intense actor. <laughs> I can see you doing it. I'm putting I'm it out there. <laughs> back in the day I have when I first started. Uh, <laughs> granted, they were not seen by many. You know, they were independent films, low budget, but I'm, I love horror films. So I you're not. I can see it. Watch. watch. It, it, it's going to happen. I'm putting it out there. <laughs> Thank you, Play Victoria. Play right now. <laughs> Thank you, Victoria, so much for being on the show today. Congratulations on all your success. You're an inspiration. You're very humble and, you know, you're passionate about what you do and it really shows in your work. So thank you for making the time to be on the show. And I can't wait to have you back soon to talk about your next big project. <laughs> oh, amazing. Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.